All right. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Mike, you still there? Oh, you know what? Keep talking. All right. There you go. Just adjusting my mic on my uh, my machine. All right, say say something again. I muted you. What's on up, the... guys? What's there up, you go. So for those of you who were like, "Oh, I can't hear Mike," he was muted in the, the OBS thingies. All right, let's begin. All right, so I don't have too much time. I was afraid I was gonna have to move the the live stream, but. It just has to be a shorter live stream. Just about a half an hour or so. It's got a busy schedule with the fam. My son has a thing that I need to go to. So I'm going to ha have to be there around 1230. So I'm going to probably stop at about 12. Exactly. 12-ish. So for those of you who are hanging out, uh, don't worry. I'll still be painting and talking. Uh, I think for today's subject, I mean, the most relevant thing that came out was the Elon Musk thing. Right? Oh, yeah. The Cybertruck? Cyber truck. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. My thoughts as a artist, uh, concept designer. Now, I'm not a vehicle designer, so my opinion is probably um, mostly focused on my own personal experiences and what I've seen other people in the same field, like what their thoughts and concerns may be uh, and what they're usually telling me and on all the lectures I've been to and conversations I've been a part of. Um, is driving a lot of what I'm about to say. But I will say it's my opinion. I'm not necessarily thinking that it's uh, rooted in, in a lot of objective truth. I'm hoping that it is. You know, I try to I try to stay as objective as possible, even in disciplines I'm not really good at. But I do feel like I have some authority because I do draw like sci-fi stuff. And I know like about markets uh, pretty well. And so <clears throat> with that being said, uh, let's talk about the things that I actually think are cool, right? So the first thing that I think is actually cool, uh, and it's most of people's opinions, uh, that i saw like arguments, which is that, you know, they're trying something new. Now I'm actually a big fan of trying new stuff. You know, I think trying new things is inherently a good idea, you know? Uh, whenever I talk to my students, I always encourage them to not be afraid of failure. You know what I mean? And a lot of times people don't accept or challenge themselves because of that fear of failure, that fear of trying that thing. And then they fall, they fall flat. Now, <clears throat> now with that being said, you know, to follow that up, you know, when I say that you should try new things and you should, you should allow yourself to fail. This is kind of where my criticism comes. Um, is that I don't think it's a good design. You know what I mean? Uh, I genuinely think it's could have been designed better and still hit the kind of same aesthetic mark that I think he was going for, the Tesla team was going for. You know? I don't think that it had to be so primitive of a design or so uh, simple uh, for it to have that effect. I think it could have still done this thing where they were hoping to like really turn heads and make people be like, oh, that's a new take, fresh take, uh, as well as it being really, really cool. Like something that I would have been like, or many other people have been like, dude, that looks super fresh. You know what I mean? And then there would still would have been people that would have hated it. And there would have still been people that would have had some opinions about it. But ultimately, it would have been really, really cool. And I've actually on my Instagram did a very, just like a very simple variations. And I'm actually planning on doing like a ton of iterations demonstrating just on a surface level how much you can improve the design, right? And then it's just your flavor now. Like, what flavor do you like, Mr. Musk? You know? And it's like, um, it demonstrates that you can still have that badass aesthetic. You don't have to sacrifice the the larger... Um, ass Sorry about that, guys. The, the way it's like open and closing there. Um, you don't have to... Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily sacrifice all the amazing aspects of the specs because I think ultimately there are some impressive specs, you know, uh, things to really be like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. But as many things happen, it 
got overshadowed by a lot of the things. And, you know, I was talking with somebody, I was arguing about the, this, this, this idea of like, you know, well, you know, how can we not challenge things? Like he's just pushing the envelope and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but that goes back to my earlier point of, I'm actually in favor of people making challenging uh, and new and innovative uh, strategies, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the, they're also now immune to criticism, you know? In fact, I think that's the whole point of doing new things is so we can have a new look and ask some questions of like, yeah, should we like reinvent the pickup truck? You know, should we take a look at the old models and like have another stab at this? I mean, these are electric vehicles. There's an opportunity here that you can get away with that, you know, uh, combustion engines are just like, you know, old school oiled guzzling engines or gas guzzling engines don't like an electric car doesn't need to do and so there's a lot of opportunity in terms of aesthetic and design like form over function you know uh so i think that's all great i think that's good but that's my point like we should still be able to look at it and be like all right it's not good though <laughs> you know and there are plenty of great examples of innovation that wasn't good or things that may have challenged something and failed, you know? And I, I mentioned this because I think it's important that I am a fan of Tesla. I'm a big fan of Tesla uh, and SpaceX and all of the stuff that actually Musk does. Now I have different opinions about like how he handles himself in certain circumstances. Cause he's, he's said some things that have really kind of insulted our, our industry a couple times. And uh, I was not a big fan of that. But, you know, he's open to his opinions. But at the same time, like, he is doing some cool stuff, man. I like it. You know, I'm a really big fan of these things. And so so for for me to just sit around and just kind of be a yes person and be like, yes, do that. Keep doing that. You know, you show those people, right? You show them what's up. But if I feel like it's ultimately going to fail, isn't that actually... Uh, not a good strategy if you really care about the thing and the product that you really want to succeed maybe you should voice some some sort of uh, some sort of concern not necessarily because it's your opinion but basically to give some insight of like what could potentially go wrong um, one of the examples i think of i think is like the second personal computer that apple made right i think it was like the apple II or something or it was like like not even apple i think it was like uh um, Steve Jobs like left Apple or forget the timeline of this, but he made like this other kind of computer. It was like the next, I think it was the name of it. Have you ever heard of this, Mike? No, I haven't. And that's kind of my point. Left and started his own thing. Yeah, I, and that's kind of my point. Like, look it up. Like Steve Jobs and Next, I think, and you'll see that it's it was a challenging thing. It was moving the dial. <laughs> it ultimately failed. It failed bad. You know. And uh, you can only have so many failures before you're, you're completely out in the street, you know? Yeah, it was next. I just looked it up. Okay. And so so innovation's dope. We should challenge it, right? Because I remember uh, same using the same example, Steve Jobs. He was like, look, dude, we're going to like make iPads, like tablet devices. And people are like, what are you talking about? This is so stupid. Like nobody's going to want like some sort of tablet, uh, laptop, or like, it's not like a laptop. It's not like a smartphone. It's like right in between. Like, well, who would want that? You know? And sure enough, the tablet market is a massive market. You know? So there's obviously examples of when you take those those next steps and you do challenge what is potentially uh, could happen, uh, people um, people might actually go with it, you know? and Or it might be a huge success and it might actually do the things that you were hoping it would do. Now, with that being said, uh, this is this is my point. I think that it's the reasons why I'm afraid it won't do well is one, it just it's just too jarring of a design. It just isn't um, it isn't cool. Like I wouldn't feel cool driving it. Like I, I would feel like ugh, you know. And uh, the people that are market this is marketed to, they're incredibly incredibly faithful to their brands just as much as people are really faithful to the the tesla brand like this is the same thing that's going to be happening with this you know 
And so that's very, very important to respect because if they're going to try to build, you know, an industry around this and compete against these, this, these already made cars, because there's a reason why people keep buying the same looking car. There's a very good reason. And it doesn't mean that you can't break that mold. There's definitely ways. I just, I'm not, like I said earlier, a disclaimer, I don't know how to do this because this is not my expertise, right? But, but what I do know is that like this type of stuff happens a lot. And when people don't read their audiences, right, they fail hard. And I've seen this countless amounts of times, right? <clears throat> and when you don't read your audiences, right, and you don't know the market in which you're selling to, you, you can really make a huge mistake. And if you were to take even like the example of like the Blade Runner aesthetic, well, think about it. Blade Runner is a cult classic. Blade Runner uh, was never a success in the way that you think of a success. Uh, this latest Blade Runner actually was not nearly as successful as it needed to be. It just wasn't. And if you take that into account, so not only you have like this kind of niche aesthetic that you're selling a niche to a niche audience who likes niche things, you're probably going to be woken up to a rude awakening, you know, and it could be a real bad blow to the company. You know, it could be a genuine loss of income. Now, another thing that I think that they've done really smart was that they did the $150, um, uh, Pre-order. Now, why is this smart? Well, it's, it's because... I'm sorry, what? It's actually 100 in the U.S. Okay. Well, it's $150, $100, right? Between that. It's still a lot of money uh, for just, like, to just pre-order. But not that much money to pre-order an actual car, right? It just puts you on a list. It doesn't mean you actually own it. It just puts you, like, first dibs type situation, right? But... Uh, why is this successful or why is this uh, a really good move? Because they did like, a, I think they got like over 140,000 people already, right? So if you were to, already. yeah, so if you do the math, yeah, so if you do the math on that, it's like, uh, what is it, $20 million, $30 million potentially, right? That is enough for them to uh, economically sustain your, you know, their, their next uh, round of, iterations on this design you know they might actually take a lot of what was said to heart they might actually try to do something a little bit more challenging um, where they try to meet somewhere in the middle you know because they have to because if they now build a car that is nowhere near what it looked like in the the, the reveal then people are going to probably feel real real weird about it like if it looks like an f-150 and yeah, that's not what i pre-ordered <laughs> yeah and then if you go to the f-150 um, aesthetic, you know, a lot of those people probably still won't buy your car because they're like, well, I'll just buy an F-150, you know? Yep. <clears throat> and so, so this is, this is the conundrum that they're, or this is the, basically the, the, the riddle that they're going to have to solve because they have the capital now. And I think that's actually really smart, you know, because they can, they can take their time within this two years and they can employ or potentially keep the people still employed and really work hard on this. To make this really dope, you know, and because there's there's definitely going to be a thing that will happen too, where I think a lot of people will not get their refunds, even if they don't like what's happened, right? Uh, and I also think there's going to be a, a thing where um, the the amount of people that will actually be able to buy the car um, might not matter as much anymore, okay? And so I think all they got to do is make something that looks cool and i think you can even with just the real simple body right like if they didn't change the actual framework of the car itself right of the truck and just designed kind of like the lines of it add some more um, aesthetic cuts and here and there putting a little bit more of a graphic read to it it could look great it could look really cool like a car that when you see driving it would still look really <laughs> out of this world right but I think people would feel like tight. They would feel like this is so freaking tight instead of like feeling like they're driving around like a dumpster, you know, because that's kind of what it looks like, man. You know, it just does. And uh, someone was mentioning to me, you know, well, you know, isn't it all about finding the simplest form? And I'm like, no, nah, man, that's just not how, how people consume things. People aren't buying just the simplest things, you know. 
Uh, people buy things that they like and people like different things and the specific audience um i was watching uh, even the fast and the furious movie and there's like a car that i was like oh that would look if that's if that design was the design for the tesla i think people would go for it it was kind of like a in between like a jeep and a truck and it was like armored looking it looked tight you know but that that was probably because it was designed like a really good vehicle designer you know and I feel like that's what they need to do. They need to not hire uh, industrial designers to to design this uh, this Tesla, right? They need to hire like people like Vitaly or my buddy uh, Adon. You know, like people that are in our industry, the concept artists who also really love and respect functionality, right? But they're badass designers. Like they design amazing looking things. And maybe they did work on it. I don't know. Uh, maybe, but maybe their like hands are tied behind their back and maybe their hands shouldn't be tied behind their back. You know, they should just let them have free reign and let them design like a freaking, could you imagine if Vitaly Bogorov, like if he just designed it without any uh, constraints, it would look tight. It would look super tight, you know? And so, and I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't even think I'm the one that should be even doing these variations. I feel like my buddies. My, my bros in arms should get get behind the wheel a little bit and just say, right, you know what? Here's what Mr. Musk should look into. And then hire these guys, you know? Because they're going to make that car look tight. And it's going to be that whole uh, pushing. Because uh, they'll, they'll do a good job of not only making it look tight, they can also make it look like streamlined. It won't look like, uh, like a tactical knife, I guess. <laughs> you know? Um, on wheels. I mean, that still sounds tight, but you get my point. So with that being said, like I said, I, I don't have much more time. Uh, I thought I'll leave my, my thoughts here. But I think it's important that people recognize that it's okay to kind of have an opinion. And this is true for both camps. It's okay to be like, I love it. I don't care what you think, you know, and you just got blinders on. <laughs> That's fine. But it's also it's also okay for the, the people to be like, look, I don't think it's good at all. I think it looks really bad. And and that's kind of the camp that I'm in. And this is, again, coming from someone who is a fan of Tesla, a fan of SpaceX, even a fan of the Boring Company. You know? Uh, my thoughts on Elon uh, vary depending on what he says <laughs> and does. You know, but generally speaking... Uh, I get what he's doing and I'm a big fan of what he's trying to do. You know, I really am. And uh, I think that I would want him to really understand that um, he, he, like for me, it feels like he may have accidentally designed a vehicle or approved of a vehicle's design that he likes. Not necessarily something that I think a lot of other people would like. I would like to think that all the Tesla fanboys and fangirls would, would buy this thing. But some of them just can't even afford a regular Tesla, you know. Uh, they can afford the $150 support and just do it as a, a, a band of brothers type situation. But it doesn't necessarily mean they will actually be able to buy said vehicle. And so if you want those people who are capable of buying and would want to buy one of these vehicles, you need to make it really worth it, you know. Make them not feel like when they go to the bar parking their, you know, dumpster truck looking <laughs> car that people aren't trashing them, like literally and figuratively, you know, because that that will that will not go well uh, in the in the long term. Because nobody does that with Teslas. Teslas look dope, you know. Like when you drive around like a Tesla Model Three, like you feel tight, <laughs> you know. Uh, like for instance, uh, my buddy he let me like you know car sit his car, and like every time I drive it, I'm like, yeah, this is super tight. You know, um, and so now I'm considering purchasing one of like the newest versions that come out. So I'm excited about it. But anyway, with that being said, questions of any kind. All right, yeah, I got some. Cool. So Anton asks AJ, "What is your experience with the Nissan Leaf?" Oh, I had a really terrible experience, but I don't think it was the Nissan Leaf's ex fault. I think it was the dealership. Um, but in terms of the way it looks and feels, it feels good. It looks great. I like it. I think a lot of electric cars actually are looking super, super sexy these days. The new uh, Prius and there's like another Toyota that's like completely electric. 
these are really cool looking cars. I forget the name of the, the one that's fully electric. Here, let me see if I can find it. I'll Google it while you ask the next question. Toyota. It's a new one. Toyota. <clears throat> Do you have another question? Yeah. Uh, Crown Mountain Gee. asks, how do I get into the habit of drawing every day? I know I have to ask this before I am uh, so sorry. Please forgive me. No, I have asked this before. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to find the car, too. So I don't see it. Um, <clears throat> uh, the, the get in the habit of drawing every day, uh, it just starts small. I think I may have answered this before, but like... Um, just like I saw this one YouTube video, which was really good. I think it's pretty good advice. But it's like, you know, start with like five minutes, you know, and then just keep adding time. Does that make sense? Like to start with five minutes, like make yourself draw at least five minutes every day. And that's it, you know, and don't even try to make it like a big deal. You know, maybe you can add other responsibilities, but that one is like the one that's mandatory. No matter what, you just do that. You always spend five minutes you know uh five minutes and five minutes and five minutes and uh as soon as you start to do that uh what ends up happening is sometimes when you start to do that five minutes you'll be like you know what i feel like i can uh go for another half an hour and then you'll just start drawing for about a half an hour and then the next thing you know you've drawn for like two hours or so it's just the it's just that that five minutes that starter. It's really a matter of getting started more than a matter of like uh, drawing all the time. Like I say, you should draw all the time um, because that's what you should be doing. It's kind of a no brainer. It's just people have a hard time getting started. Is usually the problem. Uh, I always say you know consistency is the solution to a lot of these problems that many people have. And so anything and everything that you can do to be consistent, that's what you got to do. All right. <clears throat> Luke Morsby says, yo, AJ, do you do portfolio reviews? Um, no, not, not too often. Only through my mentorship. But I have uh, begun to start to plan some sort of one-on-one -on -one sessions. And so it, it could be kind of some sort of like uh, opportunity where you can have your portfolio reviewed in that capacity. But the only other way for that to happen is if, if you met me in an event. If you're at like an event and we're just hanging out, uh, like it's more of a personal situation. Uh, I'm generally uh, good with checking people's stuff at that in those capacities, but right. not just not online because otherwise it's it's pretty rough. Because then um, I might have to do it. I might spend like my whole day just doing that. I will do like rough stuff, but like I won't like get deep into it, which you would most likely need. Go ahead. Sorry. All good. Lai asks, how long would you recommend to practice drawing daily? And if you ever had drawing diseases like carpal tunnel, I cannot draw longer than four hours a day due to my broken body. <laughs> yeah, so specifically carpal tunnel, you just need to eat less saturated fat and cholesterol, and that will go away. Um, I used to have some sense of carpal tunnel where I would draw for um, a few minutes and my arm would go numb, and then I would put it up in the air. And then it would, it would be unnumb, and then I'll draw again for five to ten minutes, and it would go numb. Uh, but then I changed my diet; I became a vegan, and I didn't necessarily do it for that. I just was doing it for other reasons, and ultimately, uh, it felt better and better until it's it's went away entirely. I don't have it at all. Um, uh, my arm used to go numb too when I used to sleep at night. It was weird. It was bad, but not anymore. It's all good. Uh, I've never had wrist pain though. That's a that's a different thing. If you have wrist pain, where you are drawing for four hours and just hurts, like it really hurts, that's not carpal tunnel. Potentially, it's potentially just like strain, and that means. And this is something I've never experienced, but I know why you might have it. That that means you are pushing down way too hard on your tablet. You need to practice on sensitivity. Mike can attest to this. Uh, I don't think you have yeah. had pain. Since, right? I mean, I think you've kind of adjusted. Not, no, I, every so often I, I slip up back into bad habits. But uh, for the most part, when, I, when I'm when i actively thinking about it, um, I can You're preventing it. Stretches. Yeah, but then it, it becomes a hard balance because then I'm thinking about that and then I'm not thinking about the work. And so it's 
it's um, not it's just, as easy. Yeah, it's just going to be a time. A yeah, I think in time, right? But but like it's clear to you and it's clear to me that it is something that is manageable that you can you can learn to get rid of it, the pain. <clears throat> and it's like you said, if it's like that double edged sword, which I I respect. But it's like you know it works though. If you're like paying attention to it, you're like, oh yeah, my my hand doesn't hurt and I can paint for hours. Um, but like, but then you're, yeah, you're thinking about it, so I get that. Um, but uh, minimum, I I usually encourage actually around four hours a day. It's pretty good. Anything more than that uh, could help, but I think there is a, a detriment to working too much, and there's obviously a detriment to working too little. We most people know about the too little part, but not too much part. Uh, I look at look at it as like a uh, by part. Imagine that you have been drawing for several hours. Um, or working out for several hours, like lifting weights, your muscles are going to rip into shreds, you know, and not in a good way. But if you draw for several, um, so you work out for only an hour and you take rest, like you rest those muscles. Um, Ouch, you, don't, don't, don't. Sorry. <laughs> what the? Uh, yeah, you're, you're way more um, likely to recover and keep going longer. So I usually encourage about four or five hours, but... I know that as artists, we are a lot more compulsive than that. We will, like, once we get in the groove of things, we are kind of in it too deep. Um, but that's that's my answer to that question. Okay. Um, Tekun Tan asks, AJ, can you talk about how you, how you got your gig on Love, Death, and Robots? Oh, they just reached out to me. It's nothing crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nothing inspiring i was just checking my emails and they're like, hey we need work on this project I had, I had no idea that i was working on it though i will tell you that much and then i worked on it and it was tight i enjoyed it that's it cool. the end um <clears throat> k digid dog as if you are ta uh, talking about elon's new truck one of the things i was wondering is if it would work like an exoskeleton one one small wreck total the truck yeah uh i don't know like i am not a vehicle designer <laughs> i mentioned that very earlier right and i mentioned that because i don't know i can speculate right like i know a lot of people are like, oh, the frame of this and that and like i'm sure you might know more about it than i would but um there are some people that will make these cases without actually knowing anything about an architecture of a car right and everything they know is just like from just looking at um youtube videos which isn't necessarily the greatest uh place to have all of your insight from um at least not alone right not on its own and so i just say i don't know because you might say that and then they show you like it rolling down a hill and you're like oh damn it's tight <laughs> i guess it does do fine you know um there is a uh, FDA, like government regulations that prevent cars that are made as essentially just metal traps. It's like against the law, right? You cannot make a vehicle that if it was, let's say, to, to uh, roll down a hill, it has to be able to sustain some pretty significant damage, right? Obviously, it is, it, there's nothing that can be impervious to any circumstance, but it's got to like live up to very reasonable standards like if it gets hit by a car and rolls over and it crumbles um potentially killing everybody inside that will not be able to hit the roads regardless of how it looks right um so i don't know i'm assume like i'm assuming the tesla team already knows about these things i don't think they would put anything on the road that would <laughs> that you would just like blow on it and it would like rip to shreds i'm sure it would be very sturdy i am almost con convinced uh, even like the, even the, the, when they are throwing the window, like rock, metal rock or ball at the windows and they were shattering, like I wasn't even like, um, I wasn't even like, uh, too bothered. I thought it was funny. I was like laughing because it's just like demonstration of like how, look how strong our, our windows are. And, uh, it's <laughs> just a bad bit. Yeah, it's a bad demonstration, but it's like th these types of things will be ironed out, you know, like, of course it will. Like, this is, 
it's it's a different story if it was like on the roads and this will start to happen you know that's much different uh but this is in a closed environment where it's being demonstrated i'm like it's all right it's just well, funny apparently, apparently they'd already thrown it at that those same windows like many times before the event and it just happened to give right then and there yeah it must it there might have been micro fractures yeah it must it there must have been some sort of physical attribute that again i'm not a physicist <laughs> i know i don't know the it just on optics of it of course look terrible <laughs> you know but i i, I forgive these things because i understand the, the value of production and time all right i see right, someone to pay five bucks dude what the yeah just look there out. yeah let's, so let's focus on that $5. super chat says hey Anthony. <laughs> i didn't even know he had super chat tight yeah. <laughs> all right go ahead sorry uh, hey Anthony, any mental health tips? Hoppa boys represent. <laughs> Hoppa boys, um, health tips, mental health tips specifically. Now, uh, this is very. Uh, I'm gonna end it on this one because I said okay. I need to get out of here at twelve, and so this is a good one to end it with too. It's a very, very prominent problem in our industry. So I'm going to give you the best advice I could possibly give somebody who might have mental health issues got it <clears throat> so the first thing uh obviously if you have anything that you feel is really debilitating like you have some real severe anxiety depression um you know obvious stuff like suicidal thoughts like these things you, you gotta get some help you know don't be ashamed don't be afraid uh nobody is you know nobody's going to judge you if you need help and anybody that does is a fucking idiot anyway all right and so if you feel these types of problems you need to go get help if you can't afford help right uh if you can't go to see a psychiatrist and pay for these types of things then you need to surround yourself with people that will help you that care about you and all that stuff right that will listen to you without making you feel like you're crazy without making you feel like you're dumb or you're idiotic um and there's people like this that exist, you know, uh, if they're not in your immediate social group, then you might need to go and find new social groups. Luckily for you, there's like websites like meetup, uh, where you can go online and you can find people local to you potentially. Or if, if you're an international person, maybe there's other places that you can find close to you. I don't know, but you, you gotta do some research. Okay. The second thing is like, if you don't have any of that, right? Like, let's say you don't have anybody close to you. You don't, um, uh, have any good social groups you can't afford therapy um and then all you got is like the internet and talking to me right online as we are as we speak right then what i will say is you know you need to listen and to engage with content online that is inherently positive okay now, it doesn't necessarily mean you should only listen to sunshine and lollipop type stuff where everything is great and nothing is wrong. I'm just saying inherently positive. Now, here's a good trick. If you're watching a YouTube channel, let's say, and you're listening to them and they're like, I don't know, they're talking about politics. This is a very common thing. And they're like talking trash. Like, can you believe this is happening? Can you believe the left did this? Or, oh man, look at what the right is doing now. Right? Um, or whatever. And then the next video that they have, it's the same thing. Oh, can you believe this is happening? Oh, now this is happening. And then the next video that they have, it's the same thing. And the next, and the next. And essentially, uh, like, let me let me use another example, like video games. Like, there's some video game, like, uh, uh, news people that are always finding bad news. Like, did you believe this? What happened with Blizzard? Oh, can you believe what's going on with Activision? Oh, look what's happened with the Call of Duty game. And like, they're, like, always... Something. Oh, the new freaking Death Stranding game. Like, did you see this thing? And all their content is in, inherently negative. Right? Like, look at how everything sucks. When you start to look at stuff like that, it really affects you. It does. Now, look at me. Like, I'm a very optimistic, very positive guy. I'm sure you guys can feel that, right? For... In, for the beginning of 2017 to the end of it, I was pretty much engaged in negative, inherently negative content. And it made me inherently more negative. I started snapping at my children more often. I started to kind of feel more distant from my friends. 
And it wasn't anyone's fault but my own because I was engaging and indulging in negative content perpetually. And I was just constantly ranting and I was constantly angry. And it affects you. Okay? So when I say you should go on YouTube and look for inherently positive uh, content, that doesn't necessarily mean that these people won't be critical of things, but they are always looking at the upside, right? So for instance, earlier on, I was talking about the, the, the Cybertruck. Everything that I said, I had some very critical views, but I also accompanied it with like, you know, the benefit of the doubt. Like, well, let's look at the positives. Let's like focus on what could be done about this. Like what are, what's good about what's going on? But I could have easily doubled down on the hate train, right? I could have easily gone and pushed harder and harder down and down and down and down, you know? And when I find that people are constantly like watching people on online who are always complaining about something, they themselves seem to complain a lot more too, okay? Imagine that everything you're indulging in online is your emotional and mental diet. And if that's all you're consuming, right? Like if you were to con parallel, uh, make a parallel to food, if all you're eating is just sugary drinks and hamburgers and like chips and processed foods, like 90% of the time, you're going to have a very sick and healthy body. If you're constantly consuming really bad um, and complaining type attitudes and people that are always talking crap about everything in the world and everything around them, that's going to be your uh, persona as well. And unfortunately, even if you really enjoy indulging that content, the content doesn't care about you. Okay. And so even though you feel good about listening to this, because it feels like, yeah, that makes sense. Ah, yeah, that's great. And then you start going online and start talking shit. And everybody else is like, what? What are you talking about? And their opinions are also driven by potentially the same kind of drive, but just on the opposite spectrum. Your day is full of like heated arguments, hot ears, like, and just a uh, uh, overly beating heart. And at the end of the day, you feel anxious and depressed and more upset. So ask yourself, is that actually what you want? And most people, of course it isn't, you know? And I have been in many conversations with really good friends who I've told them that you need to stop watching so-and-so. I told them deliberately. I was like, yeah, that, that person is, that's all they do. Like, that's all they're, like, go to the channel and find me one, one thing where they're only talking about how everything is awesome. Like, the good things in the world. Like, find me one. If they don't have one, there's no balance there. It's okay to be critical. It's not okay if that's all you're talking about, you know? And so that is my advice usually when it comes to mental health. It's like you need, you need to surround yourself with content, with people, with activities that are positive, inherently positive. And it's going to be hard because you've already built an intuition and a lifestyle that has been driven by these other actions. So you need to do small digestible bites, very much like I mentioned earlier with the five minute drawing. So that way you can slowly get the hell out of this situation. Uh, go work out, hang out with people, draw more often, go to sketch groups, you know, listen to people that are giving some good advice, good insight. That doesn't seem like they're trying to like shit on the world and everyone around them, right? They're just saying, look, this world sucks, but let, let's all like stick through it. Let's get together and let's work on it together. Let's fix it what we can, you know? And you'll find that that's, you're just gonna be more a positive person. You're gonna feel better throughout your life. You're gonna feel good, you know? And so, hope that helps. I'm gonna get going. <laughs> and then I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the today's stream. I stopped kind of painting halfway through because I was just trying to convey this idea. But um, with that being said, peace out friends. I got to go to my son's thing. Sorry, it was a shorter stream, but I wanted to make sure I still did it. So cheers, friends, and talk to you guys later. Peace out.